Welcome back to the Data for Good podcast. One episode we have for you today as we are joined by Olis, who is a senior data product manager from DeepL. We'll be talking about scaling data teams in high growth companies, covering areas across data product management, how high growth companies adapt to data management, empowering the data flow, including creators and users. We'll be talking about decoupling data. Is it all hype or is it helpful and finishing off with operational and analytic data how can we use both to drive faster data-driven decisions enjoy welcome back to the show and today we are joined by Ulis and we're talking about scaling up and in particular managing change for data teams in high growth organization at least welcome for joining us why are we why is that important and why are we talking about this today i mean i think that uh, you know when you have um, um growth and especially like uh, high growth there's a lot of like problems that will uh, come with scale and um especially for technical teams like a data team or an engineering team, it's particularly uh, difficult to adapt um, rapidly uh, to, to these changes. Um, but it's very much necessary also. Uh, so that's the kind of like very interesting problem uh, that we are here to speak about. Nice. Uh, and when we talk about scale, what, what kind of size are we talking about? When does it start needing to be thought about? I think it really depends. I think it really depends, like uh, from the product, to be honest. And I think that um, you know, you, you may you may have like problems that comes like at different uh, uh, moments, basically in the in the life like of a company, and like as the company uh, becomes more and more uh, mature. But I feel that um, when um, when you start to really you know reach the level of like hundreds of millions basically of users or reach the size of like, you know, like, I mean, big data, whatever that means, uh, I mean, it, it, you know, depending on the system, maybe the, the load of the data can be uh, easily, um, easily uh, processed or, or not basically. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I believe that like, it, it, it really depends uh, on, on the company. And, um, but obviously like as, as this grows, like those problems just become exponential. And so uh, making sure that like, you can really adapt your, um, your your tech stack and the company and the processes uh, with that growth. I think that's that's really key to uh, make sure that like you're not restraining the growth uh, mm -hmm. because of a problem like this. So data isn't becoming any more important. It's just the kind of sheer scale and size of the data that's becoming more of an issue. I think that like there is this the scale, there is the size, but there's also like a uh, sense of like like the variety of data. Mm -hmm. Because I mean now, you know, whatever we experience in our uh, kind of like day-to-day -day, uh, life, you know, we have so many applications uh, that track so many data points, uh, everything that we do. And so we're just used to having access to data and um, that this data will help us to make decisions. I think that this becomes even more important when we speak about um, customers and especially if you are in, in the SaaS. So uh, mm -hmm. if you sell basically like a software, um, I think that enabling your customers to actually utilize this data and kind of like utilizing also the data to make them understand the value that's like you, that your service uh, brings. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the, that's the key. And, you know, this value will come with a lot of different type of data collected across many services. And uh, you have to make sure that like, you bring that kind of like 360 degree view yeah. of the customer experience to the customers. Uh, and preferably like, you know, like, you know, in a timely uh, manner. So you mentioned business value. Um, and of mm -hmm. course, you come from a, a product manager background and data product management in particular. So from that angle, can data product managers, I mean, it's a relatively new role, can they effectively transform data into business value? And how have you been doing that? Yeah, I mean, 
it's true that I think that the term is is relatively new. I'm not quite sure when it was like pinpoint, but uh, it's relatively new. And I think there's discussions out there, you know, saying like, yeah, does it make sense to have like a data product manager? But mm -hmm. like eventually, it's, it's just um, a specialized product manager position, right? Um, and I think that you actually do need um, those kind of, those kind of like specialization, especially like in more uh, mature organization, like bigger yeah. organization. So uh, if your product, the product you manage is technical, um, it, there is basically a value if the product manager also understands the, uh, the technicality and like the, the subject, uh, you know, that, uh, that the, the, the product, uh, is. And so I think that here, yes, product managers that have a data background, uh, can definitely help in, um, you know, transforming the data into business value and doing so by incorporating all of the specialties that comes, uh, with, with data. Um, it's like engineering also, like, you know, you have data engineers, you have backend engineers, they are engineers, but they are very different, you know, like they are specialized eventually to like one particular thing and this specialization would eventually uh provide that like you know uh, added value uh, for a specific um task that is that needs to be done yeah uh, big data big data has been around for much longer than the title data product manager what do you think the trigger was what what where did you see it kind of kick off and become a focus yeah i don't know to be honest um I think that, yeah, it's maybe, it's maybe like as the, as the whole data industry um, becomes more mature, mm. then, you know, before you basically had one data team, and it was kind of like everyone, you know, like, or actually it was maybe one person that like just, you know, did it all. Mm. Um, but like as the data industry, uh, you know, grows, you also have this kind of like more specialization and new titles basically like coming in. Um, and so I think that here is simply kind of like a natural progression basically of the, of the industry, uh, just becoming, becoming more professional. And over time you just identified like, you know, position that, uh, would help to, um, yeah, to basically like, um, uh, deliver value. So, and to be honest, like big data, yes, it existed for a long time, but like it's only getting bigger. So those mm -hmm. problems are only getting also bigger also. And yes, we're getting much better tools. So that's uh, very nice. Um, but those problems basically like uh, don't go away. Uh, the scale and the diversity like makes it uh, and the demand also the, the evolution mm -hmm. of the demand uh, makes those problems still very complicated. Yeah, and you mentioned you mentioned the specialized engineers. Maybe mm -hmm. data's taking a look over at software engineering best practices and uh, copying a copying a few of those. You yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I'm a, I'm a big fan, for example, of uh, you know decentralization. And um, I mean, yes, we speak about data mesh. I think that uh, this is maybe a bit too um, uh, basically extreme. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that there is something in between, like between a central and decentralized uh, yeah. position. And it, it depends really on the uh, organization. I think it always, always depends on that. Um, but this comes from the uh, domain driven, basically like uh, ideology and like architecture, like the macro services, you know, like that, that's the equivalent, let's say like of like the in the engineering uh, world. And um, I'm personally like a big fan of like, looking at all of the evolution in the software uh, world, because this has been there for much longer than, than data. Yeah. And so there's so much, um, like yeah, it's just more mature and it's there's so much learnings that you can directly apply uh, to data, but changing it uh, so that it actually is more useful for the specific use case of data. Yeah, a lot to learn, a lot to learn. I like to say centralized, decentralized, it's like you're not allowed to sit in the middle. You have to be one or the other, but hybrid is probably best. I do believe in the hybrid uh, phase indeed, yeah. I think that, um, once again, I don't think there is like one fit all solution. 
Uh, I think it really depends on, on the company. I think that I would even go as far as like, there might be also like different cycles basically, like where at some point you might need uh, more centralization in one area and some decentralization in the other. Um, so yeah, but I think it's, it's a very interesting, um, uh, basically like, you know, change to witness and to be part of basically mm -hmm. like when you see basically either the benefits, uh, you know, from a centralization or the benefit of like a decentralization, how can you bring this like into life so that, um, you, uh, improve basically like the, the whole data value in an organization. Yeah, always, always evolving. Let's, yes. um, let, let's talk data management, mm -hmm. high growth companies. So how do high growth companies adapt constantly to data, data management? I think it's, uh, I think it's, a, it's painful as, uh, in any company, to be honest, uh, like we said before, I think that, um, you know, obviously, um, like any, for example, like backend system, um, is this, is the same problem. Like those backend system, uh, needs time to migrate from one version to the other and to adapt, uh, to, um, to a new problem. For data, it's the same, um, and now it just becomes so ubiquitous, like in the creation of value, mm -hmm. that you actually need to, like, um, you know, uh, make that change happen rapidly. Um, and I think that this, you know, like at least like with my experience, I see that like this is definitely like a cultural change. So there is this like mm -hmm. um, also people aspect. Um, so changing the, the way that we were doing things from, um, for example, like a smaller organization to yeah. like a bigger organization, what do you do when you double, triple, quadruple the amount of people in a company? Uh, I mean, that means that, um, you know, scale is obviously different, but like you might bring new functions that would require some data and would be either more technical, less technical, would have different needs. So there's also like, there's a high demand, um, and a more diverse demand also, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, and this means that like, you need to evolve your processes, the, the people also that are, you know, part of the teams throughout this whole data flow from the production to the ingestion, to the transformation, to, uh, all kind of like layers, basically, uh, um, you know, serving the data to the, to the right people at the right moment. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And that also means like, that's your tech stack, like your technology, uh, yeah, the data platform like needs to evolve, uh, at the same moment. You, you mentioned data flow. So from, mm -hmm. from creators to users, how, how do we empower everyone within the data? <laughs> that's a great question. Um, I think that it's, it's quite hard to be honest, because if you really look at the whole data flow, Mm -hmm. It's very long, like, and, and the bigger the company, the longer basically that this, this data flow, uh, becomes from the very, you know, upstream kind of like service that like produces the data to like the very end when, um, you know, decision is being made or, uh, you know, notification is being showed or something yeah. like this. And so I think that here, um, at least for me, what is important is to re-identify um, kind of like moment in the data flow, like where is the biggest pain point? And, mm -hmm. uh, for example, for, um, uh, for the team, uh, that I lead right now, uh, it's really to be in between the, the data producers and the first layer of data consumers. Um, and I think that here it's very important to be close to your end product. So basically like really working with the data consumers to know mm -hmm. exactly how are they using the data and what is the exact pain point, pain point uh, that they're having. And with this knowledge, you can go upstream basically and really like start to create a strong collaboration with the uh, upstream team. So in our case, like uh, the backend engineers and bring that, that knowledge. So it's this uh, famous uh, walking backwards from, from Amazon, yeah. you know, backwards from that end product. How do you go to like solve it, you know, to the, 
to the step in you know, a data flow to the step before, and then if you if you see that like you know the problem is actually coming from before, then you go upstream uh, all the time. And I think that the key for that to be successful because the data flow is so long yeah. is actually to be very explicit in like okay, this team is actually looking at like that section basically like of the um, of the data flow, and like the next team is looking at like that section of the data flow and you will have very different um, stakeholders and problems uh, throughout this data flow. From easy way to look at this is like from producer side, so like more technical, more, uh, you know, like data architecture, um, uh, backend services, uh, ingestion, um, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And then on the producer side, uh, it's much more about like being able to explain the data, being able to, you know, bring the data to life uh, by creating those analysis yeah. uh, and, and making the decision like happen. So those are very different, basically, contexts uh, and, and people with who you work with. Does remove even removing steps to reduce complexity, is that something that's considered? Or is that too Yeah, risky? I think, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of simplicity, to be honest. I think that um, it's one of the joy of my life. It's like when I see a very complex problem and I'm able to like simplify it um, to like its essence. And I think that is the same here. Like, um, you know, being able to look at this data flow and like simplify the, the complexity one step at a time, basically. And so when you're very explicit about the scope of your team, for example, and like how you can, um, you know, solve like a particular problem space, um, and, and be very simple about it. Uh, I think that like this helps uh, with clarity basically and like with really understanding like who is doing what and like how can we each contribute uh, with one another because once again, this flow is uh, spanning so many different teams that you know you need to, to create that that clarity, that simplification so that everyone uh, you know like can kind of like bring the torch to the next uh, and and work all together across the whole uh, data flow. Yeah, and who, whose responsibility is this? Who, who takes ownership? <sighs> that's that's a great question. I mean, I think that's like, you know, it depends on the company. I think that eventually this is this goes down to data strategy. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, what is your strategy to create business value from your data? And so, you know, it's. You, you could have like a have a data, for example, that's uh, that's the, take the decision and then creates basically this kind of like uh, subdivision of task. Um, but you can also have like different team, um, you know, using the infamous like data contracts, for example, to uh, you know work together and define basically like where each team basically is best um, best suited with the skill, and knowledge, and uh, you know intention basically like where the best fit. And figuring this out like as a group uh, all together, so I think it can come, it can come like from bottom up basically, so organically, or it could also come like uh, from top down with, um, you know, more like structured uh, data strategy uh, from the head of data, for example. Yeah, nice. So either way, either way works. It just needs to be some kind of ownership somewhere <laughs> along the data flow. You definitely need a strategy. Like that's that's the that's uh yeah that's that's uh that's basic but like yeah, you need you need the strategy yeah i mean that's probably another podcast in itself just talking about uh data strategy we've, yeah. we've mentioned uh something that you've brought up before is decoupling data mm. tell us a little bit more about that um yeah i think that it's also it's, is it helpful it's, or is it just hype it's definitely helpful in my sense and like it's going the same direction than the simplification um because mm -hmm. you know going back to those to those like uh domain like driven like architecture for example i think that you know it's very important to understand your domain you know and keep up to date with your domain like uh and that means also that for example let's say that like your organization has like a thousand different uh, microservices uh, there is no way that you could, you know, um, that one data team could basically like kind of like know everything about like mm -hmm. all of these like 1000 uh, microservices and be able to then 
um, follow up with the migration of like each of different one and like uh, update, for example, like the uh, analytical data model that you know is the representation, the data representation of like those microservices. And so, for me, I think that like that's something that um, worked really well, really well for us. It's really defining those those domain and um, defining basically okay, these are the kind of like a uh, few um, you know uh, data sources like microservices that we are looking at, and that's our area of expertise. And then we decoupling that from all of the other uh, microservices that are other domains that we that will basically um, look at them. And then basically your the output let's say like of your of your data team mm -hmm. kind of like a you know a single source of truth like or or an api and then each domain can you know consume that data trusting the data they don't have to basically know what's the migration of microservices one uh what happened there what happened you know mm -hmm. like uh two years ago they should trust basically the outputs and and only consume this and why wouldn't this work? What what are the what are the haters saying? Shall we say? <laughs> um, I mean, with decoupling, obviously, like you need to have a strategy. So you need to have basically like a a way for like those decoupling areas to work together. So you need some kind of like common standards. You need, you need a way to like. You know, also decide about um, how to uh, centralize. You know, like certain certain technology or uh, certain processes. So that's why I think, to me, um, I wouldn't go like for fully fledged like data mesh, and more something like in between. Yeah. Once again, depends on the company, but like where you have some kind of like ownership, which is still centralized, that gives like this backbone basically to um, to the data community in general. Mm. And then you have those like decoupling, basically like um, uh, entities that uh, can act independently, can go as fast as they want, or as slow as they want, can adapt, can rechange basically the roadmap. Mm -hmm. But like everything's encompassed basically like uh, within one domain, and they have the, the possibility to do uh, whatever they want. But once again, the um, the you know um, kind of like danger here is that. It how it goes basically like in totally opposite direction, and then there is no possibility to kind of like really utilize the data across all of those different domains in a sensible manner. Mm -hmm. uh, that be, that can become a, a nightmare for the consumers eventually um, to consume all of this data. So a decision to be made, but not to be taken lightly. There's, there's a lot of uh, a lot of work around it. Yes, and I would say that, like you know, um, being being aware that like you know some decisions that you've taken that at some point of time coming back to them and still reevaluating re if uh, this still makes sense and adapting to it and and moving uh, like this forward. Nice, nice. I, I'm I'm conscious of time, um, mm -hmm. so one final area and topic that uh, I want to put to you is operational and analytical data. So the two different types. How? How as a company can you use both to get to, of course, the end goal of faster data-driven decisions? How do we use both? Yeah, I think that's that's a great area of interest for me. I think it's um, it's it's really you know, really touching basically the more complex subjects. Um, it's like you you have operational data on one hand, and typically this would be like very you know uh, simple basically like data being consumed from one service to the other and uh, it does like a specific like task for example but then you have the analytic analytical data which uh, most of the time it's much bigger much more complex uh, yeah. you know spans maybe like years of data uh, um, you know has like uh, uh, very complicated business, uh, business logic embedded in it and so on and so forth but I think that eventually going back to that customer experience, like modern customer experience, I think that you definitely need a high quality, um, like rich data, which would be more the analytical data, but yeah. you also need the data to be highly available um, and, uh, and kind of like real time basically. So, and that would be the kind of like more operational uh, side, of, side of the equation. Mm -hmm. And so eventually, I feel that like, you know, if you want to really create that modern uh, customer uh, experience with, you know, 
a lot of data to understand basically the value of your product and to make the right decision. Um, then like bringing that uh, analytical data, but like with the kind of like integrate, integrating it like into the uh, operational systems. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the, that's the kind of like, you know, um, uh, gold, um, like uh, vision that's, uh, that everyone should, uh, should strive for. But it's very complicated to to do uh, uh, both. So, so what's the what's the most obvious challenge that's going to come up? Um, yeah, I think that obviously to you need to already be quite um, you, you need to have quite a lot of like uh, processes and 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 technology in place to have that like. Um, you know, rich data, which is of yeah. high quality. And then, um, you know, you definitely have to uh, develop your tech stack so that you are able to uh, process this data, like at the speeds that you decide, it can be daily, it can be real time, and then make it available to the um, right, basically, storage, depending on your user. So it can be internal user, you can use a normal data warehouse, warehouse mm -hmm. for that. But then if you want to provide it to like external users, then you definitely need a different type of storage. Um, and so I think that like, yeah, designing on, on, the, on the right, basically like architecture for your data yeah. and finding basically that, um, that kind of like incremental, you know, progression towards this. Like, I don't think you can go from one to the other, you know, directly. That needs to be uh, progressive because it's like, you know, you are adding basically progressively some, um, yeah, quality, let's say, like, or some value to your data, and this builds on top of each other. And mm -hmm. eventually, when you have good internal data, you're ready to basically go, like, outside and, and produce that for, um, make it available for external con consumers uh, with different challenges, basically. I think it's a theme that's gone through the whole podcast to make sure you've got a strategy, a solid strategy, and it's going to be progressive and it's going to take incremental steps to, to keep evolving. Strategy. Yeah, strategy is everything to be honest. So having the right strategy and making sure that like this fit basically so that you can deliver in a strategy. I think that mm -hmm. this is uh, very important, um, you know, to actually create, create that value. Yeah. Amazing. Well, a lot of valuable insights that, that you shared with us today. What, what are you excited about for this year? What's coming up or um, what's on the radar? Yeah, I mean, um, tackling all of those problems that uh, we've been discussing, to be honest, uh, you know, seeing where uh, that high growth of, uh, of DeepL is, uh, is leading us, uh, both in terms of like the company itself and mm -hmm. uh, being part of this uh, AI boom, but also, yeah. um, you know, like internally and all of those like data management, um, um, you know, like a question that we, uh, that we discussed, like how to evolve the strategy and, and move on and you know, making that strategy like a reality uh, in the day to day and being able to like build on top of like uh, what we've already have uh, right now. Nice. And with an AI boom, we need a strategy to, to, to cut through the hype. I mean, I think that, you know, there is always a part of uh, uh, luck, let's say, like when you are like one of the kind of like early player, like in, in the game. Yeah. Then, like when that industry like explodes, you obviously are in a good position to ride the wave and and basically like um, you know like expand there. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's definitely the case of, uh, of DeepL. It's been there for a long time, basically. Like and yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so very much looking forward where you know the the whole um, generative AI will bring us uh, in the next years. First move is advantage. It's uh... let's keep that advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And yourself personally, what's coming up? Anything? Or where can people keep up to date with yourself and what you're working on? Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm always I'm always interested in a million of different things, uh, which is a good thing, but also a problem for myself choosing like what uh, what I would uh, like to uh, read. And yeah, here for me, like really, you know, diving into um, the whole data architecture and. Uh, trying to find basically those concepts that, uh, you know, live perhaps like in software engineering or perhaps mm -hmm. like somewhere else, finding those concepts that I can, you know, apply to uh, to data and to the 
specific problems that I have now to to basically like um, yeah improve the uh, the whole like uh, management of data um, and also improve uh, um, you know myself uh, over time. Yeah, nice. Looking for them uh, them new inspirational points uh, wherever you can yeah. find them. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, it's been a pleasure for you uh, joining us. I must say, time's flown. Um, thank you once again. Thank you very much. And um, ciao for now.